Hi, I'm Danny Lipford. And I'm Chelsea Lipford Wolf. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And be sure to share with a friend, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. This week on Today's Homeowner, we're completing an unfinished bathroom makeover that these homeowners inherited when they bought the house. Here's the bathroom right here, All right. but I'm gonna warn you before you go in. Uh-oh. Wow, this is a first. Paul and Jessica Golden have been married for a little over a year, and besides combining their stuff, they're also trying to figure out how to combine their talents to manage and improve their new home. Well, we've only lived in the house about a uh, couple months, two months maybe. We moved in, and then we just, just started going. What do we want to change next? What do we like? What do we want to go from there? Yeah, the so. guest bathroom was the first priority. I'm more laid back about all those decisions, so that and. It's gonna come down to what Jessica wants to do regardless. So uh, Jessica makes all these decisions. I end up being the project manager, right. pretty much, which means I just nag him about it. Yeah. The vanity's dated, I like to change that. I wanna swap out the countertops. Mm -hmm. um, I kinda have an idea for full mirrors that I'd like on there. Not sure about the lighting, but mm -hmm. whatever, paint. We definitely yeah, wanna paint. Strip the wallpaper and then paint, definitely. Even though I kinda like the artwork, um, we gotta get rid of it, right? Yeah. Gotta get yeah. Rid of it. It looks pretty rough right now. But this project has a bit of a tight timeline to it. Well, Paul is moving to China in about a week from today, actually. So um, we'd like to get it done before he moves. So we better get started. OK, here's the bathroom right here. All right. But I'm going to warn you before you go in. Uh oh. We bought the house for my aunt and uncle. And they must have been in the middle of a bathroom renovation because the wallpaper's down. But their teenagers have made some of their own art on the walls. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you'll see for oh, this yourself. Oh, this should be pretty interesting. Let me take a look at it. Oh. <laughs> wow, this is a first. Graffiti art is definitely an unconventional approach to bathroom decorating. Um, first thing I think about is we could take like a clear polyurethane and just go right over this so that you can save all of this. Yeah, that's a possibility. Paul, what do you think? Yeah, we could do that or we could paint over it and get rid of the <laughs> wallpaper. <laughs> or that. I, I think maybe that's what we should do here. Uh, actually, they still have the liner on this. That's probably why they stopped where they stopped because that's not easy, but we've got a way to get all of that off. Then are you thinking of painting or wallpaper? I think I'd like to paint. What, what else, what other ideas did you have here? You know, I like the vanity, but I don't really like the style of the cabinet doors. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that we could replace those? Yeah, I mean, the t tell you what, when there's, it's not very big at all, so we can actually put all new doors on there. Now, we can also save this great hardware you have here, oh, if you would like. <laughs> no, let's get, <laughs> get rid of the hardware. <laughs> what, get rid of the yeah. hardware? Okay. We'll and, give those back to my cousin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> what about this whole area over here? Do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, I've always liked the look when it's just a full mirror, mm -hmm. and then it has like maybe two sconces that kind of come through. Would oh, that you know, be a possibility? Well, that takes a little coordination <laughs> between the electrician, us, and the, the glass guy to cut the, the holes okay. in the glass, because that's something that you don't want to try yourself, but uh, but I like that look. What about the uh, popcorn ceilings? Um, we've done them in the other room, but I tell you, uh, you've got a good <laughs> trick for that, even though being a tall guy, it's the best shoulder workout I've got yeah, so far. Yeah, it so. is. It's, it's a tough thing. I'll tell you what, the same formula that we use, the same little solution that we use to spray on the walls works great to get rid oh, of the textured ceilings. But, you know, when you put all of this together, it starts making a fair, you know, good bit of money here. Um, I don't know how much are you aware of that or not. But. He's the boss. Yeah, um, I know some people. I think I can get some pretty reasonable prices. That's an understatement. Jessica's family owns a local business that includes a kitchen and bath design center, so she has access to some great design help and an inside line on the materials to make it all happen. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. I like this. Oh, Can you me. Grace here? Of course I really love this. This is everybody's favorite. Yeah. So you can see it would be this door style, this color, but I overall love to get a larger view of it is great. Robin also helps Jessica work out the details for the custom mirror she wants so they can order the materials and we can get to work. All right, let's get started. Great. Right. 
Seems like a lot of drop cloths for such a small bathroom. Paul's right, but the first rule of renovation is protect everything you don't want to change. Now this might seem like an abundance of caution, but I tell you, if you've ever done any kind of bathroom renovation and ended up with a damaged tub, it really is disheartening when you finish everything and it looks good and you see that chip on it. So taking a small piece of plywood and a little plastic and covering it up really gives you a good place to stand while you're scraping all of the wallpaper and the popcorn ceilings. I'm getting ready to paint this kitchen. I thought I'd use this rosin paper I have left over from a flooring job to cover the floor here on the countertop just to protect it from paint spatters. So I'm going to show you a trick of how to cut this paper without it tearing on you. First of all, you roll it out, roll out as much as you need, and then we're going to use a utility knife to cut it. But rather than cutting it from the top edge down, which most people would do, we're going to start an inch or two down from the top edge. Because if you cut from the very top edge, the paper will fold over and has a tendency to tear or block the paper so you can't see where you're cutting. So we're going to start again, maybe an inch or two from the top, you cut all the way down and straight through the bottom edge. There, just like that. And you can see because we didn't cut through, this top edge is held in place. I just tear it away. This technique works great for cutting anything that comes on a wide roll, including roll roofing, builder's felt. And if you've ever installed a floating floor, you know that the underlayment comes in a really wide roll, sometimes as wide as five feet. So try this trick, I'm sure it'll help you there. Newlyweds Paul and Jessica have a bathroom in need of a makeover. The old wallpaper had been removed and the liner redecorated before they moved in. They had uh, let their teenagers turn it into an art studio. So we'll have to correct that, but first we're starting on the dated vanity. The cabinet stays, but the doors are going away, as is the medicine cabinet. Next, we disconnect the plumbing to the old faucet and start removing the vanity top. Well, that's in there, isn't it? Which is proving to be a bit difficult. I'm not ready. Let's tilt it straight up. Okay, Paul, now we can get it. Lovely. Made my end a little lighter. <laughs> Next to go is the dated light fixture, which reveals the wallpaper that was here before the graffiti. Oh, now why would they want to take that wallpaper down? I have no oh, clue. Wow. It's like it's homemade. <laughs> so Jessica and I get started mixing a solution to remove the wallpaper liner that remains. Why do we put fabric softener in it? It keeps it from evaporating so fast. Okay. So it, um, allows it to work because all of this is supposed to attack that glue on the paper mm -hmm. you know and you already have the, the face of the wallpaper off if you didn't have the face of the wallpaper off we'd have to take a little paper tiger and kind of perforate everything fortunately we don't have to do that but there's a lot of spraying and scraping ahead of us all right you got that special suit for jessica oh yeah i got one for you too <laughs> oh do you now all right oh go. extra large thanks <laughs> appreciate that that should work well then all right so we're suiting up yes yeah, suit up and we're about to get wet and dirty. You need some help, Jessica? <laughs> I see you had no problem getting yours on. He's even got the deluxe model with the hood. <laughs> the abominable <Looking> snowman. <laughs> All right, so I'll get started with the pump-up sprayer here. And hopefully, with any luck, this stuff will fall right off. The key to success here is to saturate the ceiling texture and the wallpaper enough to release their hold on the drywall without damaging the drywall itself. Once it soaks in and works for a few minutes, we can start scraping. So it is starting to buckle a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. That's a good sign. Get some of it off and then it'll work even better. Just want to try to keep from gouging it as much as we can. Good job, Paul. Yeah, there you go. Okay, y'all got this under control here. I'm right behind you with the sprayer if you need any more water. I think you're supposed to spray it on the walls. Like this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, you want to try this, Jessica? It's really easy. Oh, no, I'm, I'm good with the sprayer. I can work the sprayer a little bit if you want me to. I like my job. The, the ceiling texture, texture works, works pretty, pretty much, much the same, same way. way. Oh, that's coming right off. Jessica, is that easier than the last time y'all did it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Much easier. Ma Jessica, spray a little bit more right through here. Where? <laughs> right Where through here. You're about to lose all spraying privileges. Come down here and take it from me. These two make great comedy relief. Try to get a little bit more on the ceiling and less on me. Sorry. And it's a good thing because this is a very tedious job, spraying and scraping. 
spraying and scraping. Fortunately, the graffiti markers were water-based, so they aren't leaving any stains on the drywall. And once it dries overnight, we're getting ready to paint. All right, so any of these strike you? Um, I really like this one a lot. Maybe one of those two. Are these too dark, probably? Yeah, I think that's too dark, and this looks really blue to me. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so. But yeah, I think that's my favorite. Yeah, that one looks really good. Okay. All right, let's go pick it up. All right, let's do it. Hey, did you guys find a color? Yeah, we're going to get it right now. Good deal. Hey, does this happen to you a lot? What, I work, she shops? Yeah. All the time. So all we're going to do is take some of the joint compound and just skim out just a little here and there, just real light coat. You don't want to put a lot on there because the more you put on, the more you're going to have to sand off. Right. But if you put some like that and then just kind of skim it like that, and that's it. As a matter of fact, that whole area right there is ready to go. So if you just get these kind of spots here and there, and since you're so darn tall, you get the high spots, I'll get the low spots. Sounds good. The joint compound fills the low places where the drywall has been gouged during the scraping process. Once the first coat dries, we sand off the high spots. Usually a project like this will need at least a second coat to level out the low spots because joint compound does shrink a little as it dries. All right, we have all the joint compound on. It's drying, probably to be about another hour. A Little bit of sanding necessary. Paul's really experienced at sanding, so no problem with that. Now, you guys have painted before? Yes. Yeah, technically. And, and no problem whatsoever? Ah. Yeah, a little bit here and there. <laughs> all right, so sand it, start with the ceiling, paint your two coats there. You already got your trim painted, two coats on the wall, then clean up and we'll get back in the morning. Top goes in first thing in the morning and uh, I think I'll probably get it finished, I don't know, midnight or so. Okay. Well, if you are in the market for a new toilet, look no further than the Delta Brevard because this toilet right here has got flush IQ technology. Let me tell you what's all going on here. First of all, it is a touchless flush so that when you wave your hand over this sensor, it automatically flushes the toilet for you. It also has overflow protection. What does that mean? Well, it means that the toilet's not going to overflow because inside the bowl, there's a sensor that detects the water level and it stops the water from flowing into the bowl once it hits that level so that it won't overflow. Another thing that it has is leak detection. So, you know, inside the tank, if the flapper is not seated properly, you can start to leak water and that'll run up your water bill. Well, there's a sensor in there that will alert you to let you know that that leak is going on. There are a couple of other cool features that I like. Look at this. It's got a slow close lid, so you're not slamming the lid. It also has a smart fit connection right here for the tank to the bowl so that that reduces leaks as well. This is just a pretty cool little toilet. It's also ADA approved with a comfort height, so you're in good shape to go there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to get one of these. I'll get it on my bill and give it to Danny. <laughs> Paul and Jessica Golding are knee-deep in doing it themselves. Now it's time for the pros to step in with a new marble top Jessica chose to update their bathroom. The place looks tons better with paint, but this top will really raise the level of this room. Hey, Danny, hey, how's it going? How you doing? I see they got the countertop in. It looks pretty good. Yeah, they came in early this morning, got it all put in. Didn't take them much time at all. So. Man, that's perfect. And I love having the sink underneath like that. It's so much easier to keep clean right. that type exactly, of thing. Yeah. So, uh, so you're going to help me uh, hang this mirror, huh? Yeah, uh, that shouldn't take too long, right? Well, let me show you what Jessica picked uh -oh. out. Okay, that is a mirror with, you, you notice all the trim on the bed? Right. It all is going to go around this mirror. And the mirror that you saw on the other bed there has the holes in it for the sconces so we've got a little electrical work to do a little okay. trim work to do but when it's finished it really won't take that long this is going to look awesome yeah i think it's going to look great we start by dry fitting the bottom piece of trim and the mirror so that we can mark the holes for the lights and cut out the drywall where the new boxes and wiring will go Now we can attach the pre-painted wood trim around the border. The spacers behind it will give us room for a molding that will help this adhesive secure the mirror. This time when it goes in, it's here to stay. Okay, make sure it doesn't slip out on us. Okay, we're in all the way. How about that? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Now the rest of the trim can go in to secure the glass and add those decorative touches that Jessica wanted. All right, perfect timing. Okay, so far, this is what we have, but now you got to make a little decision. Okay. We have the crown to go right on top. Now, we need to decide we can go 
anywhere you want on this. If we go down like this, of course, Paul's a little taller than you. We don't want to see the board behind it. That's about as low as we could go. Is it? Okay. And about as high as we could go is there, which kind of encroaches on the crown there. Um, possibly a little bit lower. It's really whatever you recommend. So I would think right about there. Yeah, that looks good to me. Okay. All right, that's the way we'll go with awesome. it. Awesome. I All love right. it. All right, good. We'll have it finished here in just a little bit. We'll even put up a couple lights for the heck of it. Awesome. I appreciate <laughs> okay. it. All right. Once the crown molding is leveled and nailed in place, the fixtures go in, covering up the electrical boxes and getting us closer to Jessica's vision. Oh, you're coming in to get a look, huh? I love it. It's perfect. You know, it really does look good. I think the designer did a great job in uh, thinking about how to fill the space and then to be able to get all of these pieces the right size. I mean, that's a lot of pieces, a little bit of finagling there, but I think it's okay. Looks awesome. All right, let's see if we can put these on here. So, okay. can you reach it? <laughs> right, there you go. Just tighten that up and slip it right down over it. Okay. There we all go. Right. Give it a try. Turn the switch on. All right, let's go. Uh, uh See? Dimmers. All right. There you go. Awesome. It's perfect. <laughs> now we can turn our attention to getting the faucet Jessica picked out installed. With this individual handle style faucet, it's important for the countertop fabricator to know the spacing you want so that these holes are located in just the right spots. Finally, Paul and Jessica tape off the cabinet to get it ready to paint. What are you doing? I'm taping. What are you doing? Get out of the way. I'll do it. The vanity is getting the same shade of gray that the cabinet shop used on the mirror trim above it. They also sent a catalyst to mix with the paint so that it has the same durable finish as the stuff they applied in their shop. Once the vanity cabinet is dry, we can install the new doors the cabinet shop made and begin adding all the accessories like the curved shower curtain rod, the toilet paper holder, and the hardware for the cabinets. All right, what do you think, Jessica? A little bit, let's try a little bit lower. Okay. How's that? Yeah, right there. I like that. That looks good. All right, pretty good. Well, you know, it's really tricky when you're trying to position hardware, especially on a newly refurbished cabinets, and especially hard if it's an unconventional hardware like this. But Chelsea found these cool things called glue dots that come in a little dispenser like this, and you're able to apply them to the back of the hardware. And it's kind of like having a second set of hands that you're able to put it right in place and then reposition it if you need to. That way, it holds it in place while you put your screws in. So, so there's, there's more hardware, hardware to mount, mount pictures, pictures to hang, and lots of little decorating touches to finalize. But, but all that means we're just minutes, minutes away from a completed, completed project. Installing a backsplash is relatively easy, and people often assume that applying tile to any wall requires the same process. But a tub or shower enclosure is very different because of the constant moisture it endures. A backsplash is primarily decorative and can be installed directly over drywall. But for a tub or shower, you need to begin with a cement backer board base because the tile will be constantly wet. Next, you'll tape the seams of the backer board and apply a waterproofing sealer to the surface before you begin installing the tile. That way, even if moisture makes it through the tile or the porous grout, it won't be able to get inside the walls behind them. The vanity, mirror, and light fixtures were dated, and the textured ceiling was the only one in the house they hadn't tackled. Now the graffiti wallpaper and dated fixtures are all gone. The clean, simple walls now give the attention to the new marble vanity top and the mirror with its custom trim and integrated sconces. The popcorn ceiling's also gone, but the vanity cabinet remains, but now with new color and new modern doors and drawers. This is a room Paul and Jessica can be proud for their guests to use. Well, Jessica, you made some great selections in here. It really looks good, and both of you worked pretty hard to make it look this good. Yeah, it was a lot of hard work, but looking at it now, it really paid off. You can, you can tell it looks very nice. It looks amazing. I love it. That's perfect. Well, I'll tell you what, there is a lot of work involved in a simple bathroom remodeling like this, and Jessica did a lot of work not only here, but making all of the selections. But it did help a little bit with her family's kitchen and bath showroom. I'm Danny Lifford. We'll see you next week.
Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.